This is the mountain equipment javelin jacket. And this is the school jacket. And while not a direct descendant of the javelin jacket, seeing as the javelin is now long since discontinued, the school jacket has very much replaced the javelin jacket in the mountain equipment soft shell range. The javelin jacket is old news now, it's been discontinued for many years, but this was designed to be the perfect fast and light alpine soft shell jacket. It has everything which you would need in the high mountain environment and nothing which you don't. It has two small and simple chest pockets with a mesh interior, simple one-way zip and a helmet compatible hood. This was my go-to jacket for many, many years for virtually everything from, of course, summer and even winter alpinism to UK trad rock climbing, winter climbing, ice climbing and even ski touring. So it was a shame to finally have to retire it a couple of seasons ago when the zip gave up the ghost. As you can see, it's pretty much next to useless now. So I was looking for a replacement which ticked all the boxes that this jacket ticked and the obvious option was, of course, mountain equipment school jacket. They are on paper both very similar jackets, being minimalist, lightweight, broadly speaking, summer alpine or summer rock climbing jackets, but there are some fairly major differences which I'll come on to now. Both jackets have a very similar cut, probably based off of the same model or mannequin in the design process. Any differences in cut and feel probably just come down to differences in the orientation of stitching etc. So they both have a slim athletic fit with articulated arms for ease of movement when climbing etc and for a reference point I am just under six foot 182 centimeters tall and weigh about 90 kilos for what it's worth I'm fairly broad fairly chunky for a climber and alpinist I'm quite quite thick and stocky so yeah and both these jackets are large so use that for your reference point and while yes they are definitely quite a snug fit I can if necessary put these jackets on over top of a mid layer as well that's not something that I do very often, this is generally something that I'll wear just over a short or long sleeved t-shirt or base layer. But yeah, when I need to, I can layer up with these jackets. The Javelin jacket has a twin fabric design, so the lighter colours on this jacket is an Exolite 1 fabric, and the darker panels on the shoulders and across the top of the helmet, that's Exolite 2 fabric. So Exolite 1 is thinner, lighter, stretchier and more breathable, and then the Exolite 2 fabric is bit more beefy basically, a bit more durable on high wear areas such as the shoulders and the arms. In comparison, the school jacket is all made from the same fabric across the, across the design and this is x 125. Now that doesn't necessarily directly correlate to the one or the x 1 or x 2 in the javelin jacket but just based on my own personal kind of judgement and feel how it feels this is somewhere in between the x Lite 1 and the x Lite 2 in terms of durability, stretchiness, breathability, etc. So on balance overall, the Squall is slightly more stretchy, slightly more manoeuvrable and breathable than the Javelin was, but yeah, it's, it's fairly, fairly negligible really. The stitching design is also different between the two jackets. The Squall jacket has an overlocked top stitch seam design, which means that the seams are slightly more prominent, whereas the Javelin has a twin needle flat lock design so the seams are all well seamless basically so in theory the javelin jacket has less seams seams to get snagged on rock or whatever etc but in practice i've never noticed it to be a problem in the school jacket either so it's more of a aesthetic difference really where the javelin jacket has twin napoleon chest pockets the school jacket only has a single napoleon chest pocket and that's on the left side of the jacket now, this is largely down to the funky design of the main zip, which I'll come on to in a second. But again, it also makes the jacket even more minimalist. Because at the end of the day, one less pocket means one less zip, which is one less thing to break. And it's also less material, less material, which means less weight, less bulk, and less cost. The school jacket also has adjustable Velcro cuffs, whereas the javelin jacket doesn't have Velcro cuffs, just purely elasticated cuffs. This is half elasticated, half adjustable with Velcro. So it's a fairly subtle difference, but it does mean that if you've got relatively slim wrists, you're more likely to have a better fit with a school jacket and you're gonna be getting less drafts coming up the cuffs. And now moving on to that rather funky zip design. So this is the kind of USP, the unique selling point of the school jacket. 
Okay, it's not unique just to the school, it's a feature which can be found in various other mountain equipment jackets as well, and indeed I believe some other companies also adopted it. And this is the offset zip design. So, instead of the zip just going straight up and down the middle, like virtually every other jacket you'll see in the world, this goes diagonally across the jacket, which as I said means that there's only space for a single Napoleon chest pocket, because that zip gets in the way. But the main reason for this is so that the zip, the zipper, is off to the side of your face, not in the middle of your chin. And that's exactly what it does. It keeps it out of the way. Now, the jury's out as to whether this is actually any kind of meaningful feature or just a gimmick. But in theory, that means that you're going to get less draft coming in straight to the front of your face. It also avoids the chance of getting chaffage from the zip on your chin, or potentially, especially if you're climbing in winter where everything's frozen getting your beard stuck in the zipper as well. Now, like I say, the jury's out on this feature a little bit, and personally, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of inventing a solution to a problem which doesn't really exist. Now, I've worn my javelin jacket in virtually every condition imaginable, far beyond what it's actually intended to be used in, like Scottish winter, for example, and I've never had a problem of chafage from the zip of that jacket or any other jacket on my chin. Equally, I've never got my beard or any, kind of, any other facial hair stuck in the zip, Obviously I'm clean shaven right now, but I often have quite a big beard, especially in winter, and that's never been a problem for me. Maybe some people out there have had that problem, and they'll appreciate the offset zip, but for me, yeah, it's solving a problem which didn't really exist. The offset zip is definitely going to be a little bit warmer, a little bit less drafty around your face and neck, but as this jacket is marketed to be as a, basically, British summer rock, cli rock climbing jacket, this, these aren't the conditions really where you're going to be climbing in a full-on blizzard and a whiteout. So it is a little bit strange that they've chosen to put this feature on basically a summer jacket. I can understand it absolutely in a winter wake soft shell jacket where you are going to be climbing Scottish winter conditions in 80, 90 mile an hour winds, horizontal snow blowing in your face. But yeah, if you find those, those kind of conditions in the British summertime, you've got very lost and things have gone very, very wrong. So for me, the offset zip is very much a gimmick really. It's not got too many negatives. There are some, which I've mentioned in a second, but yeah. I don't really see the positive of it other than yeah, just making the jacket look and feel a little bit different to other jackets on the market. But the one negative, which may just be a personal thing for me, having the zip off to the side means that the vast majority of the time you're going to be wearing the jacket like this, you're not going to have it done all the way up. And for me, it feels then that the jacket is all crooked and uneven on you. I like everything to be kind of nice and even when I'm wearing my clothes, just because of the weight distribution and everything else, and it just feels a little bit weird having more of the more of a collar on one side compared to the other. You kind of feel like you want to be doing that all the time, but then the jacket gets twisted and it feels weird down here. So yeah, on a comfort point of view, the offset zip, I'm not really a fan, but it is what it is. I wanted a jacket to replace the javelin jacket and this was the best suited one on the market. So in summary, both jackets fill a very similar niche and they do exactly what you expect them to do really, which is keep most of the wind out and a little bit of the rain out, while still being comfortable and crinkle free and retaining plenty of movement and durability for when you're climbing etc. They are marketed slightly differently, the Javelin was marketed as a summer alpine jacket, fast and light alpinism, whereas the Squall is marketed as a kind of British summertime trad jacket, so designed for sea cliffs and mountain crags in summer, but at the end of the day they base, they're both basically for, cover the same niche and will also extend beyond those niches as well. That's the kind of temperate weather where you're doing quite, act, quite fast activity but not, not running, for example. And purely from a design and cosmetics point of view, again, this is gonna be very personal to the individual, I preferred the look and feel of the Javelin. I like the two-tone design, the different colors for the shoulder patches versus the body compared to the just single one-tone design of this jacket. 10 years ago, this was all of, this was the fashion, maybe 15 years ago having different coloured panels on your jackets, your hard shells and your soft shells, whereas nowadays virtually everyone is going for the single tone colour. I was more of a fan of that, but what can you do? From a cosmetic point of view, I also preferred the flat lock seams of the Javelin compared to the slightly more proud and pronounced seams on the Squall, but again, it's a fairly negligible difference and when you're wearing the jacket and climbing, you can't really notice the difference. So, am I happy with the Squall jacket as the replacement for the Javelin? Yes, absolutely. Do I wish the Javelin still existed and I could have just bought another Javelin? Yes. But we are where we are and 
The squirrel does a perfectly adequate job for what I intended it to do.